Salutations everyone, I am super 9 x and today we are recording another episode of Ace Academy. The last episode was by far the most adorable and precious thing ever. Uh, last episode we had a very sweet moment with Kauri and today is a new day, so hopefully we see what the hell happens after that night. I turned up my alarm and stretch, uh, let out a groan, yesterday was really intense, a really intense day, and I'm certainly feeling it now, at least it's a Friday. Well, with a regretful sigh, I roll out of bed and prepare for my classes. Will we get the kiss, Carrie? I wonder how Carrie is today. I'm about to text her when I hesitate. I don't want to seem overbearing. Carrie needs some space to process everything that happened yesterday. I'm confident she'll find me when she's ready. I grab a quick breakfast and drive to school. Yuna is waiting for me in class and smiles brightly when I sit down next to her. Hey, Yuna. Hey! Sorry we haven't had a chance to catch up. How did your meeting go with Yuri? It wasn't as bad as I anticipated, even though he asked a lot of questions. About Eagle? I know he's interested in my team back at CIO and why. She blinks in genuine surprise. Oh, I was under the impression he was curious about Eagle. It's okay, I didn't mind. Clearly he did his homework about how teams are run in the States, because he didn't seem surprised by anything I shared. You know not. There's a reason why he's the youngest account manager to manage a team at Dashu. Have you talked with him yet? Yes. He said that you show a lot of promise, and he's confident that if the rest of your teammates are as determined as you are, then you'll definitely be a force to be reckoned with. That's it? She furs her brown concern. Yeah. Should he have said anything else? I guess he was serious when I should talk to her about her brother. Actually, May now is not the right bring time to bring up the conversation. Uh, we'll see what happens. We well, had a good conversation, but there was one thing he said that stood what out. What is it? I was trying to think of the most delicate way to put this. I know that you didn't find Dashu through the SBA. She opens her mouth and uh, speak, but I shake my head. And I know how difficult that must have been for you to reach out to them. She uh, gazes at sh her ga uh, she gazes at her lap. I'm grateful that you did, but why didn't you tell me? It wasn't relevant. The team knows what uh, the team knows what happened to your brother, don't they? I'm the only one who doesn't. She falls silent. What happened? It was an accident during a match. How is that not relevant? Her voice grows cold. I don't think now is an appropriate time to talk about this. You know. She stares straight ahead. The professor is here. Class is going to start soon. The professor just entered the room and getting settled. We have a few minutes, but that's obvious. That's not going to give me uh, get more out of her now. All right, I drop her now, but we'll finish this conversation later. She nods. The professor enters the room and gets settled. Good morning, everyone. Please I'll open your textbooks to page 81. Now it's a rough subject, but I think it's important to talk about your it. Your assignments are on the web link. Have a great day. You and I pack our things walk out of class together. Do you have another class to go to? No, but I have to meet my physiotherapy professor. I'm a TA for his class. I know you're a TA. Yep. I don't usually help out in his Friday classes, but he's holding exams today, so I need to be there. Do you have any other classes? No, but I'm kind of hungry. I grabbed lunch at the pile lounge. Her face lights oh, up. Oh, you're lucky. They're supposed to have really good food. They do. They have options for other countries. They had a cheeseburger once from there. You know, his eyes grow wide. I love cheeseburgers! Doesn't the dining hall serve them too? She wrinkles her nose. I don't think what they serve in the dining hall can even be considered food. Or do you eat lunch? The hot dog cart! Oh yeah, I forgot we had a hot dog stand. I didn't know anyone actually ate there. You should try it! They're so good! You really like American food, don't you? Yes. You know, checks the time. Oops! I'm going to be late! I'll see you later! Bye. I wave as she dashes, dashes off. Alone, I make my way to the lunch. Why aren't you going to go to the hot dog cart, dude? She just told you how great it was. Check the menu to display in the lounge. The uh, usual Japanese fare that I can find during the high altitude today. Special is na na uh, Napolitan spaghetti, popularly known as ketchup spaghetti. The bartender approaches me and waits expectantly. Hmm. I think I lost my appetite. Why the fuck did you lose your appetite? Second thought, I'm not really that hungry. The bartender away from me and said, decide, well, I'll get the order or something. I'll get a water. May. Is this seat taken? Uh, I kind of want spaghetti. Look at the spaghetti. One in Rome. Or I guess in that case, one in Japan. 
when uh, uh, I'm just gonna actually save this because I have oh I already have it damn it one uh, whatever spaghetti please bar town nods brings up my very nice taking it uh, seat an empty table as soon as I sit down someone slides the seat across from me I'm ready to apologize and ask if the table is taken when I see and look girl smiling at me may is this seat taken oh no you can sit here thanks it's a little bit uncomfortable after what happened yesterday. I think she feels it too. So, um, how's Calry? She'll be okay. May not. I thought so. I haven't seen her that upset since. She hesitates. Since Ryuta, she blinks but seems relieved. Oh, Calry told you about Ryota? Something like that. Did she say it was all my fault? It was certainly implied. <laughs> May sighs. Uh, I wish I'd never said anything. I blank May doesn't strike me as someone who has many regrets. She always seems cheerful and seems to take whatever life throws at her in stride. I believe that you meant well. Thanks. If only Kaori could see that. I wasn't trying to ruin her friendship with Ryota. Or my friendship with her. They would have been so cute together. You know, if Ryota hadn't been such a jerk. And how awesome would it have been if my two friends ended up together? Sounds like you were excited for her. I was! Even back then, Kauri was more reserved around people. She didn't like to show her feelings. So I was so excited when she told me she liked Ryota. He wasn't, if he was such a jerk, why were you friends with him? He wasn't always like that. Honestly, I don't know why he exploded the way he did. We used to do everything together. His family even took us on their vacations. I knew him back in elementary school when he still had huge glasses and would tell goofy jokes that were too smart to be funny. Kids used to pick on him a lot. So we entered middle school and he worked hard to change his image. He lost the glasses and became more serious. The more I think about it, the more I think he stuck with us out of obligation rather than true feeling. We were his only friends for a long time, until he hit his growth spurt. Then all the girls were suddenly interested. May looks thoughtful. Actually, I think it was when the other girls started to notice him that Kaori liked him too. Do you still keep in touch with him? Of course not. She hits a table for emphasis. I told him all that stuff in confidence, thinking maybe it would give him a push to make a move. Well, he made a move, all right. He went out of his way to hurt Kaori. What kind of friend is that? That's not a person I want to associate with. It's just frustrating that Kauri would lump me into the same category as him. I can see that. She raised an eyebrow. Don't tell me you agree with her. No, no, you don't sound anything like Ryuta. I mean, you can definitely, I can see definitely, I can see definitely, uh, I can definitely see Kauri jumping to conclusions. She's just so stubborn, too. She wouldn't even listen to me when I tried to explain. Then why do you keep trying? May looks at me like I spurred I spurt her around. She's my friend. I left her alone for a while. No one- I know she has. It might take her a little- Anyway, since I really do- But don't get you- uh, I'm not sure if I like that. Seems kind of like a dick move, like, when you're making drinks. Actually, I think, of course, I t it's Thank you, May. Huh? For what? If I understand why Carrie acts so Carrie like, May's eyes wide. You think I turned her into that? Makes sense. She's withdrawn, quick to make judgments, stubborn. Me She's laugh. sort of always been like that, I think. She's always been stubborn, at least. It's been so long way, so try with her. May looks She's good. my friend. I left her alone for a while so she That's could cool later. off. No one should be alone. I know she hasn't forgiven me yet, but she will. How can you be so sure? It might take her a little longer, but in the end, Kauri always sees reason. May completely confident that Kauri forgive her. This must be how she can still act so fam... fam familiar... yeah, whatever. English with her. Even though Kauri doesn't reciprocate those feelings. I like any other words reciprocate, but then the other one. I have to admit, I kind of admire May for that. Anyway, since I really didn't get the chance to say it yesterday, 
Congrats on your win. Hey, Blink. No, oh, thanks. But don't get used to it. Anna Bugesha has a lot of practicing to do. It won't be that easy the next time we battle. Then if the next match we have is half as good as the one we had, uh, I'll be satisfied. May grins. Don't worry. Us girls won't be going down easy. You did in that fight. From the corner of my eye, Spock, Carrie, and Shell entering the pilot's lounge. Shell's st uh, still alive and in one piece. They must have worked things out with each other. Lots of relief. Carrie searches the room briefly, makes eye contact with me before glancing away, then turn to my surprise. She walks over to us. Shell falls. Uh-oh. May is just surprised when Carrie and Shell sits with us. What's going on, Brosif? <laughs> Nothing much. Where's Mayo? Class. Look at her at Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Hi. She looks away, uh, sideways at me. Hi, May. May doesn't react right away. Right, right. Then squeals in delight and throws her arms around Carrie. Hi! Uh, May! Stop it! Carrie pulls away in a huff while May laughs. Four of us continue to chat together. Attention felt from yesterday are completely gone, as if the day never happened. May even got Carrie to laugh. Eventually we all start separate ways uh, of class and obligations. I stopped trying to time. Damn it. I'll go with you now. Uh, I was browsing a list of clubs and classes early in Ace Offers Cooking Club. I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember this one for when I did. Uh, you know, Zero. I'll just cook as well, but check it out. Cooking class. I hate this noise. I forgot oh, how much I hate this noise. If you don't mind, I'm going to uh, skip. Because, A, I already done this, and this is gross. Right. I hate the noise. No. For our drive. Uh. Once you put. I hate that noise. Why did they choose like the most disgusting noise? Why? Stop it! It's gross. Once my uh, dings, dings, whatever, dings, dings. Hmm. Important. Uh, Let me. Basically, the oh. emphasis of the scene is she, we all. C I cook something great. She Practical. cooks something. It tastes like shit, and she's upset about it. Can it practice? Yeah, basically it that's all you need to know. It weird. wasn't anything too important. I'm sorry I'm skipping it, but that sounds gross and I hate it in my eardrums. I've got a surprise for you. Uh, just get that noise out of my head. Oh, oh god. I am sorry I skipped it, but I hate that noise, first of all. Second of all, basically I was just cooking some plot, whatever. Nothing really greatly important to the whole story. Disgusting noises. After I swipe my son in the hangar, I make my I make a beeline to Eagle. Valerie's perched in front of my terminal, but jumps to jumps up once she sees me. She moves from the terminal and gestures for me to sit. Voila! I stare at the scrolling uh, code on the screen. She's got to stop acting like I can read this stuff. What is this? It's a manual documentation. It needs to be cleaned up before it can be fully understood, though. So you called me or showed me something that's not complete. Across the room. I thought you'd be able to appreciate the magnitude of this discovery. I'm not trying to uh, downplay the importance of this. Besides, my script is parsing it as we speak. It'll be done in a few minutes. We wait patiently for our program to finish running. As I watch as she keeps an eye on her script, she confident uh, she's confident in her program yet keeps glancing at it, exposing the eagerness beneath her calm demeanor. I can't help but wonder, how did you get into engineering? Girls can't be engineers. That's not what I said. Valerie laughs. It's like a puzzle. What? Taking things apart and putting it back together. Finding new ways to piece everything together to make it a better product. The possibilities are endless, even if we can't see all the solutions just yet. And you just discovered that by accident? She shrugs and becomes strange, uh, stra strangely aloof. Things broke around the house a lot. If I didn't fix it, then it would be broken forever. I can English. I hope you guys know this. Why not buy a new one? It always worked fine once fixed. Why spend that extra money? But why did you have to fix it? Why not your parents? She frowns in disdain. My mom couldn't be bothered with things like that. If the computer broke, she'd pretend the problem didn't exist until she needed to use it. Then she'd go and buy a new one because she needed to use it immediately. Money was always tight and that's why I started trying to fix things. 
The first thing I ever properly fixed was my bike. I was 15 and my neighbor at the time was a young woman at university. She helped me fix it and when she learned I was interested in this stuff, she gave me a bunch of how-to books for my birthday. I guess I was lucky that my dad was pretty handy. He taught me how to take care of my things. Fire grins playfully. Could have fooled me. Eagle's always a little worse for wear by the time he gets to me. Isn't that right, Eagle? She coos affectionately at my gear. It's not a puppy. A sharp beep interrupts our conversation. It's done. Voila. Voila. Valerie and I both lean to get a better look at the screen. I turn my head to ask her uh, a question. When her hair brushes my cheek, it's soft and smells like flowers. I didn't realize how close we were to each other until now. I was too focused on the screen to notice. Her slender figure fingers dance across the keyboard. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Why your core only activated that one time? The function of the core was set to debug mode with a single run instance. English, please. The overdrive mode was meant to be used for testing purposes, so it was set to only activate once. What does that mean? It means if we can figure out how to change this setting and find out the parameters of activation, you could use the overdrive mode on demand. Why as wide as I consider the possibilities? Are you serious? Yeah. In theory, anyway. She squints at the That's code. That's not even the best part. Here are blueprints with algorithms and formulas. What do they say? Probably puts their finger to her lip. Hmm. It seems to be incomplete. But we might be able to use this and a bit of reverse engineering to fill in the gaps. If we can figure this out, we can understand the details of the core. Only one we came with a manual too. Okay. So completing this code will help us learn everything we need to know to use my core. Yes, of course. Which understanding women were that easy. She laughed. It is. Once you unlock her code. Oh damn. That's pretty much impossible. Why did that include this function in my core and why didn't you tell me? I have so many questions. Let's keep it. A secret? It That's not even You're kind of amazing. She grins. About time you noticed. Why did I include this function in my core and why didn't you tell me? I have so many questions and too few answers. Let's keep this a secret. A secret? Yeah, there's no point in getting the team's hopes up when we don't even know if this will work. Plus, I don't need anyone snooping around my gear. I look patient, appointedly at Valerie. She smiles in at What? That's what brought us together. Are you saying you wish you'd never met me? Of course not, but one Valerie is more than enough. She smirks. Don't I feel special? I gets to work and I watch her for a while. She's working too fast for me to comprehend what she's doing and I don't want to interrupt her groove to explain it to me. In a few minutes she glances back at me. You really do like to watch, don't you? Huh? First it was Sho and Mayu at the beach, now me. I didn't watch them. Her eyes sparkle. So you just like watching me then? Too bad this isn't that interesting. After saying goodbye, I leave her do her thing. I still got more time, uh, what I feel like doing. Uh, we just talked to Valerie, though. I wonder if Valerie- You know what she's up to! You were just there! Hello? Hey, Valerie, are you busy? Yeah, I'm about to go meet a friend for some coffee. Uh, anyone I know? It's you, silly. Oh. I'll meet you at the cafe, in front of the bookstore. You were just there. What if what? With her. Come on, game. Continuity, damn it. I was waiting for me and a booth by the time I arrive. It's rude to keep a lady waiting. Hey, Grace or the answer. Well I don't respond. Valerie watches me in the You space. like what you see. I certainly wouldn't say no. Stay to the point I see. Right. Uh, Stay to the point I I'm just gonna save that as well. True question. There's no right answer. Aw, you're smarter than you look. 
Hey. Fell your last. Have you ordered yet? No. I was waiting for a certain someone to get their butt over here. So I'm hearing as you want to see my butt. Right, smirks. Give me a twirl then. I put the Maximus and Goonies Maximus. I hesitation, I jumped to my feet and give her a leisurely turn, then throw a small wiggle in for good measure. Probably works as hard to keep a straight face. That just made the wait worth it. I knew it would. I flip over the menu. <laughs> I love being a smartass in this game. <laughs> I flip over the menu and take him in three of my options. Valley and I both place our orders, and she pulls out a pencil and sketchbook. What are you doing? Not me. You. Huh? She pushes the sketchbook towards me and grins playfully. I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Okay. Pick up the pencil awkwardly. I don't even know where to start. I'm not very good at drawing. I've never really done this That's before. okay. I'll help you since it's your first time. She leans in the stable, rests her chin on her hands, and flashes a warm smile, taking this cue to start drawing. I clumsily trace the pencil on the page. As hard as I try, I, uh, my uncle and my fingers cannot illustrate what I see. Are you done yet? Fry uh, speaks through her teeth. I try not to stir her pose. No. I can use a sketch. After a few minutes, Valerie tries again. How about now? Still no. She waits another couple mm, minutes. Now? Calm down. It'll be done when it's done. She sighs heavily. <sighs> the things I have to do for you. In case you forgot, you're the one who asked me to draw you. You can't rush these things. Shouldn't you be concentrating? What are you doing talking to me? You're the one talking to me. If you spent more time on your drawing and less time blaming me for things, you'd be done by now. I glare at her. She winks before returning to her pose. We fall silent working on the drawing. Valerie stares confidently at me, never looking away. While I glance at her for some reason, that makes me even more nervous. I push away my embarrassment and focus her features for all the times I looked at her. I haven't really seen how perfectly her features flow into each other. It's the first time I notice how truly beautiful she is, and my face flushes from the thought. Next time I glance at Valerie, she smiles more genuinely. I know she saw me blush, and that makes me blush even more. After a few more minutes, I drop my pencil. Okay, done. Valerie breaks her pose. Let me see! Pushing forward from the sketchbook, I wonder if she'll like how that I drew her. With big old, with big old bitties. It's accurately possible, like an ironing board. She stares at the drawing, I see her garage. She grabs the sketchbook at the table and studies it closely. I hope it's okay. This is more than okay. It's really good. I blank. I, I anticipate she. I anticipate she used a lot choice of words, but good is not one of them, really. Yeah, you really captured the eyes. They're so expressive. Do they look like they're up to no good? She laughs. They look like they only do good all the time. I guess I still got a long way to go. She needs to look at the drawing. You really think it's that good? Mhm. Mm it's really pretty. Hmm. I had a good model. I just drew what I saw. She hugs the sketch pad to her chest and beams. That's good to know the whole engineering thing doesn't work out. You can always fall back on the modeling career. I'll keep that in mind. Her cheeks are tinged pink. I think she's generally flattered. But I glances at the tire wrinkles her nose. Ugh, <sighs> I've got class soon. Don't sound so excited about it. It's not a fun one. Which one is it? Introduction to art history. Don't you like art? I do. And since I also like history, I thought this would be a good choice for one of my electives. So why the disappointment? Well, it turns out that although I like history, and I like actually creating art, learning about other people creating art is not as fun. So watching me create art for you wasn't that fun either? She smirks. That doesn't count. I was part of the creative process. That's true. She glances again at the time and yeah, gathers her things. Okay, I've got to head out. I nod. I do pay for our drinks ahead of several ways before I catch Valerie finally sneak another peek at my drawing. Oh yeah, well, that's good. House is quiet when I get home. Uncle Kaito's still working on his crazy hours. His working his crazy hours and Cow and Nikki's prize still at our club. Stifling out, I trend upstairs. It's been a long day and all I want us to do is relax. So I pass by Nikki's room, I notice her door is closed. Huh, I guess she's home after all. I think nothing ever until he deep extremely male laugh behind Nikki's closed door. Nikki Giller uh, giggle slowly falls. What is this? There is a boy in Nikki's room. How dare you? And they're behind closed doors. 
Not on my watch. I burst into her room. Uh-oh. Nikki's eyes wide and her mouth drops open. The boy twists to look at me in the chair beside the bed. There's a boy in your room! <gasps> what are you doing? Who is this guy? Oh, is this, uh... Nikki loops from the bed and tries to push me away, but I stay rooted to the ground. Is this Ken? I turn to the guy who's ignoring Nikki, pulling on my arm. Are you Ken? He freezes like a deer in headlights and stammers out in affirmation. Yes? Ken Yin. <laughs> Leave him alone. We're just studying. Studying? Is that what kids are killing it these days? Yes! What? No! Studying! As in studying! She points to her bed. I take a other look around the room. Nikki's bed is sprawled with books, tablets, and laptops. Ken is holding an open textbook in his lap. I look at pure, I look a prayer terror in his face. I'm not as fooled. I'm not fooled. Underneath that good kid facade, there's a demon just waiting to pounce on my cute, innocent Imuta. Ken is in my class, and we have an exam next week. I glare at Ken, who covers, uh, cowers from my stare. So, now that you know nothing weird is happening, get out! I like how it says get out, but it clearly says you can leave. I cross my arms. Actually, I think I'll stay and help you two study. What? <laughs> Whatever you're learning now, I already studied. Don't you have your own homework you can do? We're studying fine without you. Are you sure about that? I think Ken here would appreciate the help. I glare at Ken who gulps hard and nods. Actually, it would be an honor to have the help of an ace pilot. No, it wouldn't. I narrow my eyes at Ken, very suspicious. Fine. Does that mean you'll leave now? I never break I, I I never break eye contact with Ken. I'm watching you, so whatever you're thinking about whatever you're thinking, don't. Ken nods rapidly, clearly shaking. I won't I I mean I'm not I'm not thinking. I, I mean not like that. <laughs> I give him one final glare before walking out of the room. Nikki goes to close the door. Door open. She rolls her eyes. Fine. If that'll make you stop being crazy. Before I leave, I make the universal, I'm watching you sound my fingers. Ken's eyes widen even further. <laughs> Luckily, my room is across from Nikki's. I leave the door open, too, while I work on my assignments. I'm too distracted to focus as I strain to hear what they're talking about. Every so often, I hear them repeat a math formula or compare answers or equations. Huh. I guess they are really studying. This time. Eventually, I give up and watch videos on MeTube. After two hours, Ken goes home. Nikki slams the door and shuts uh, and shut to her room. Sheesh, what's her problem? Yeah, you shouldn't. That was a loser rule in my house, you know. If there's a female in the boys' room, or if there's a male in a woman's room, door stays open. Always. Okay, so that is another episode of Ace Academy. We will continue this in the next episode. Hope you are enjoying Ace Academy as always. This is an interesting game. Uh, I don't know how much left of the game is there. Like, there is. We have a ton of episodes on this game. I would be curious about how many more episodes there are left of this. Not that I want the series to end, but I am just generally curious of how much story we will get and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the series as always, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.